Boom. We are live, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are all having a wonderful weekend. I'm going to be taking a look at Bitcoin and what's known as the Wyckoff reaccumulation. Now, for those of you that already know where we're going with this, you'll have a glimpse already. Um, but for those of you that don't know, uh, stick around because we're going to be taking a look at a few other nice tokens like Perlin it took a nice jump. Um, and there's a few other things I want to go over just in terms of general market sentiment and how we've been able to recognize what Wyckoff had called the composite man. Um, so we're just going to dive right into this and we're going to start off by taking a look at Bitcoin. That's going to be the easiest way to do this. So let's let's go. OK, so I want you guys to take a look at this here. A nice little write up by stock charts called the reaccumulation review. But more importantly, is what I want you to take a look at here is the movement between the top of the box, the bottom of the box, this creek and the break above the creek, which is usually around the either 21 or 50 day moving average. So if we go to Bitcoin, for those of you who've been following around with me for quite some time now, you'll know that I couldn't decide myself whether this was right, a white cough accumulation or distribution. Oh, well, that's because it was actually neither of them. What we've been witnessing is what's known as reaccumulation, um, and this is something that I think is fun. Is that every time when you're learning, there's always room for more, and until you know, you don't actually know, right? And so, taking advantage of all these different um, indicators, these signals to some degree, the what the, I mean, not a signal, but what the market is telling us. So here we see when we look up, we saw this nice break above A, which would turn into B. You saw this really nice creek. Uh, which is what they call it, this kind of very low area of volatility. This is showing you that this, like the Bitcoin is currently in like very strong hands, right? So it's a little bit of movement around the mid of the VPVR line is, is really, really important. Now, now that I look at it, it seems pretty obvious. I was like, oh, here we are. Here's the accumulation. Here's the creek. And then here's the breakout above our moving averages, which is what the creek is, essentially. It's that stream of daily moving averages on the daily here that we had jumped over. So when we look at this reaccumulation area, we can see that we go, we should jump up, uh, we should go for a last point of supply and then a sign of strength here for sh shots 11 and 10. Now this is going to be really interesting to witness because usually news is secondary. A lot of the people um, in the both in the stock market and the crypto space get all hopped up on what news is coming. It's actually most of the time irrelevant. Uh, the way we look at it is composite man is or, or the whale, whatever you would like to call them. Um, you know, when we're when we're whale watching, we're looking for um, the oper the market operator to make a particular move. Now, the op the market operators are generally the people that own these companies uh, or parts of it, and they're part of the way the media gets made and created as well, right? So. Depending on the market liquidity of a token, you could move it with very little noise. Bitcoin, on the other hand, is a multi-billion dollar, something 240 billion or something like this, right? Uh, and I should actually double check on that, but it's unimportant now. So this nice creek area, the breakout, and now we're going to be looking for the last point of supply in the test. Now, this could do a few different things here. Um, I feel very clearly that it will go to 11,500 now. I was waiting for this chart to kind of share itself with me. And, and again, for those of you who've been watching for the last two months, like two months here between June and July, I'm like, I can't, I don't know. And the reason I didn't know is because the Wyckoff reaccumulation is a little bit different than we look at our normal Wyckoff accumulation and distribution charts. So this creek here and the jump above the creek was really important. And then secondarily, we're looking for the last point of supply and the sign of strength based out in this phase E area. Now that brings us to some of our next ideas that we've been really excited about. And I want to give a shout out to a uh, bear family member, Jerry here. Well, we had been watching. Um, so we've been trying to chart a bunch of these guys uh, for you here. And we had been charting um, uh, Pearl here. So if I actually go on to bear Dan Jerry's, uh, we'll load his chart here for a sec, bear Dan Jerry. Nice. And then we'll take a look at Pearl. Um, Perlin here. See, now there's a few things that I think are really important. There is Elorant, um, Perlin, um, yeah, oh no, this is uh, going to take me longer than I thought. 
Okay, well, let's just go back to it and we'll draw it up. I apologize for this. And you guys know that I don't really like editing videos. And because of that, I'm just going to post it as it is. So excuse me for this moment. <laughs> we figured out. Uh, it's just easier. It's more relaxed. If you guys actually know of any good video editors that I can just send stuff off to that, really, that, really, that work really quickly, that would be productive, I guess. Because um, I really don't like editing these all that much. It's just easier to flow with it <laughs> and think about it later. Okay, so let's take a look at, at Perlin here. I, I want to show you guys something fun. So... Uh, uh, Baird and Jerry had charted up Perlin, and we were looking at it in the lower areas of its Wyckoff accumulation uh, phase. And before, uh, so Jerry had sent this to me last night. It was drawn up really nicely, done a great job, and we were we were looking at its uh, its breakout. It was uh, it was been down about here, and or sorry, right around this area in the breakout of phase D. Um, and what I noticed, and one of the things I kind of made a mistake of here for the last few days, so this is a really important lesson for everyone um, that I think was really important for me, which was understanding two key things. Um, I, I've often said that, you know, I don't really care what the token is right now. If it's, if it's producing this particular um, phaseology, then I'm going to be interested in it. Now, um, what... What I forgot to do was go to CoinGecko, our favorite place, and type in Perlin. Because one of the things that makes a big difference is what are the market caps of these tokens. Okay, Perlin's at 19 million, all right? And you can see that it came up uh, from the last, in, in you know, here, around 16, 14, or sorry, this is, let's go back to June here. You can see that uh, from around 6 million market cap up to around 20, right? So that's where we're getting all this momentum. So one of the key things now that I'm going to be uh, always doing is making sure that I'm looking at the low cap tokens for these plays because both XLM and um, BAT have been slow moving. It's not to say that they won't move, but when we jumped in fetch and we played this move with fetch, this was much more satisfying. And the lower market cap tokens are going to be much more um, indicative of the large, very quick growth gains because to go from point A to point B doesn't take a whole lot of movement. Whereas I forgot to think, oh, XLM, where's XLM at? Oh yeah, XLM isn't in the top 20. And it's sitting at a $1.9 billion market cap, right? So to jump to like 30% like we got out of the first part of this XLM trade. Um, so for those of you that are interested in our private group, uh, remember you can sign up. Uh, and if you don't like it, give you a refund. So no questions. So why not sign up? But anyways, more importantly, um, here we were looking at... Uh, okay, so here we have our, the one of the, the one trade. This is one I'm super interested in right now as a comparison. Seller was an, another great version of that. So we can look at seller versus bad right now. So a seller, as soon as we got into the box, um, box E and D, we we broke out quite quickly outside of the box, right? So we'll probably retest the top of this before moving up higher, but. More importantly, for basic attention, uh, sorry, not basic attention token, let's uh, XLM. For XLM, what we were looking at, it, once we broke into D, right, this double top at D and our entries here, um, the explosion up to 30% at a, at a multi-billion dollar market cap is huge. Whereas in comparison with what we did, what we saw with Fetch, um, one of our uh, previous trades, uh, the one that we were just looking at here, um, when we look at what happened with fetch we're looking at a much more a much more explosive move because of the smaller market cap right so these these tokens are somewhat illiquid but on binance is a huge liquidity pool for some of this stuff and not only that they're investors in this space as well so when we think to ourselves well what's composite man doing we can actually very clearly watch what composite man is doing because it's made up of a bunch of different players so it's much easier to think of the market as a single individual i think personifying someone who is better at trading than you who has a infinite amount of capital and an infinite amount of time to make those trades work so remember that that composite man or, or the whales here have a lot more time to play and that's what they play as well which are these um, accumulation and then breakout areas you know so if we now compare fetch with something like elorand which was another token off finance's research board um, we see that the explosive gains here just kept going so there's no reason to think that some of these tokens might go three five x but the the careful part is to remember that this is like early stage venture capital right here you have a five x gain on elorand in like four 40 or 50 days, right? Absolutely explosive move out of this token. Um, and then you can see it very clearly here on the area of CoinGecko. We're like, okay, ERD, we're going to just take a look here. We we're up at number 52 now. Oh, um, 
up at number 52 now. So we want, again, we want to look at the market cap here. We just want to digest how much it took to get to where we are today. So we jump back here while we are in the, in the lows in the accumulation area. You're talking about a $9 million market cap up to $200 million in Elorand. Right, so these are very, very hot moves right now. So that's how we've been charting them. Elorand is here in this orange and, and maybe even in red space because it's coming up near the top of, the, of some of the peaks that we can expect. But also remember that there's no volume resistance here at all. Once we broke out past here, as long as they kept pumping money into it and building hype around it, market operator can sell to the retail investors. And that's inevitably what they'll do. We will see some type of accumulation and distribution pattern in Elorand eventually, right? So buying up here is quite silly, especially when we see that there are other moves much earlier on in their sentiments that are closer, like Matic, for instance, here that's been going going up through this beautiful ascending channel, rising through our Wyckoff accumulation phase, and then on the likelihood of it breaking out. Now, you know, there's a few that are doing these very similar plays. So again, remembering like, okay, well here, look, Waves is about to go through something very similar. And e equally still, well, there's very little resistance on the volume profiler here to go up a significant amount. It's 300% potentially, right? So keeping a really close eye on, on this, learning how to use the Wyckoff accumulation and distribution channel is very important. And, and even more importantly, I think now that we're seeing something so clear here in Bitcoin through these reaccumulation phases, a break above the box here is going to be pretty indicative of, I think, composite man or the, the whales here being able to play back and forth between Bitcoin and these other positive black swans. I think one of the reasons we'll see so much growth out of Bitcoin is because of this decentralized marketplace that we have. How crazy is that? That around the world people can trade something like Fetch, like an early startup seed stage capital company essentially. This is fundamentally unheard of in what we have, but it's probably one of the most uh, ex like exciting things about the market right now is that look, if we can offer this stuff to the, the, uh, like everyday people around the world, your ability to get in, your ability to be a part of what you're interested in, like say you were an early adopter of Twitter and you could like buy in with your $5 every week into like a small liquidity pool of their share of like uh, security tokens that are relation, or, like in relation to the equity of the company and the growth of so the revenue and crap like this. That would be fundamentally amazing because right now one of the things that we don't have is the ability for uh, everyday people to get in really easily. They can't just go buy Tesla, they got to open a brokerage account and they don't know what to do and they don't know who they should be buying from. And it's too many questions where if in these apps like Digifox, you have this really simple, easy, like, hey, just automatically invest in up and coming companies or like the top, you know, these communities that build around um, financial education and, and finance, you know, financial technology, uh, this what people are hyped up now about decentralized finance, which is what Bitcoin always has been and what this market has always represented. I think people are just finally now realizing how powerful that is, especially on the long term, because they'll end up tokenizing everything, even my property or the owners of shares. Anyways, keep that in mind. I don't want to rant on for too long. Just a little quick update on Bitcoin and some of our other trades that are taking place right now. Again, if you want to learn more about this, join our private group. Um, we'll be sending out our f uh, first part of this month's newsletter, which is more information on, on the Wyckoff analogies and how to really get into the, the nitty gritty of, of what you're looking for, for the signs of strength and last point of supply. Um, and then we'll be producing this month's newsletter, which is a very, very similar doc thesis to everything we've been explaining now so stay tuned join the private newsletter or, or join the free one if you don't like uh, and whatever you'd like to do i don't know it's up to you guys give us a thumbs up or thumbs down see how uh, either way could go i really appreciate all the support it's a uh, fun welcome to all the new bear family members we had over like 60 new people join or something that's that's outrageous um, I'm very grateful for you. Uh, we're really excited. I'm probably going to scale up some of this stuff as we move forward and bring in some a bit of a, a, a deep dive aspect to it as well, uh, just because I think what we're witnessing now is going to be one of the most exciting bull markets over the next five, 10 years, you know, uh, and it will go, some things will go up and they'll go up 10 X and they'll crash down to nothing. Some things will go up 10 X and maybe they'll go up a hundred X. It's really um, interdependent on a few things and luck still has a lot to do with it. So remember to play. In, in the world of randomness, that this is not, nothing is guaranteed. You know, you always use your stop losses, all that fun stuff. So if there's one thing I could leave you today, just always be investing, learn to do what you love, and uh, just limit your losses so that you can always come back and play another day. This is Tia with the Arcane Bear. I'm thanking you guys for joining us today, and I am signing off. Uh, we'll roll over here, and we'll give you my silly face, and then look at this. I'm going to give you a logo outro because I know you love the bear. Steal. Bye.